Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Al uh, Jones here. Um, today, I bring you the last words of Baphomet. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with who Baphomet is, he is the primary deity of the Freemasons. And if you're not familiar with who they are, that the education that you get in Freemasonry is a prerequisite for the deep state, for entering the deep state. You cannot enter a position of power. You will not get anywhere in your career until you go through your Freemasonic education. And you've heard about the 33 levels of Freemasonry. Well, at each step of that, at each initiation that you go through, you submit one more vertebrae to the god Baphomet. And in doing that, then you are handing over your whole body to them. And so the reason we crossed swords with Baphomet was because of the World Health Organization's meeting uh, at the end of May in 2024, where they're voting whether or not to have another pandemic, basically. Right, whether or not they can write the laws, whether or not they can submit the national uh, health legal legislature of each nation, if they can make that subordinate to an overarching global legal response framework as dictated by the WHO, the World Health Organization. And that piece of legislature, that treaty that all of these nations are supposed to uh, adhere to, that effectively signs away humanity's right to, to freedom of all kinds. It means pandemic unending. Because in that legislature, pan pandemic is not defined. It is what we say it is, and we can change our minds as to what a pandemic is at any time. And so it would just be the beginning of lockdowns and the end of freedom on Earth. So our team took an interest in that, believe it or not. And it, it's effectively selling out the human species and what does it take to sell out your own species what is the price that you could be offered to sell out your species and i don't think anybody has an answer to that unless the guys who are signing this treaty or voting for this treaty unless they are not 100 percent human and for them to be possessed by baphomet makes perfect sense in terms of it's not actually the human who's selling out the species it's somebody wearing a human meat cloak who's selling out our species. And that scenario makes far more sense than anything else I've been presented with. And so last week, and uh, again this week, we had two major missions to basically delete him from the calculations of how things play out on Earth. Uh, like literally, there is nothing left on Earth that is Baphomet. For all of the min millions of minion spirits that he had floating around, all of the architecture, the temples, like our missions were quite large, complete, and went through several layers of hell, which he inhabited, even his own personal fiefdom there. Now, having eliminated all of that, uh, firstly, we expect the World Health Organization vote to fail, that their meeting is to fail. And when we did a reading on the opening speech, it's kind of like the speaker's going, oh, we don't even know what we're doing here. Like there's nothing, nothing's going to happen as a result of this meeting, which is a victory for humanity. But also this is something that weakens the deep state hugely because a lot of the human staff that are selling out our species who are working direct, who are collaborating with demon kind or alien species or whatever theory you prefer these collaborators are now no longer puppets they are capable of independent thought and we're expecting that they make decisions just as humans should anyway this is an interview i took about a week before the attack started on him and um and i think this is his last words this is his, the last thing we'll hear from him and so this incredibly rare recording, firstly of an interview with Baphomet at all, but also to know that this is the last thing we'll ever hear from him. So please, and, uh, and, and as usual, we 
present this as an audio recording in order to maintain the anonymity of the channel who was using who we were using on this occasion. Thank you very much and enjoy the show. What do you want? Is that you, Big B? I'm someone on behalf of the man. He's busy. Big ass, you guys aren't that busy. I'm not interested in you. I want to go further up the food chain. I'll ask him one second. You've got two minutes. What do you want? Um, I want to talk to you, and this will take as long as it takes. You may yeah. have you seen the have you seen what's been going on with hell lately? Yeah, it's a little bit chocolate black down there, but you know, it's always fucking chaos down there. Yeah, right. Well, we're the only humans who've ever hit it. We're the we're the ones who assaulted hell recently, several times. Yes, we have noticed. Next time we'll fucking Hoover before you come over. Yeah, well, you know, you guys have done a really poor job of evading me for the longest time. We haven't needed to before. You're different. Doesn't mean we're not going to be prepared for you next time. Yeah, I don't think you can be prepared for me. I don't think there's any preparation you can make. Bring it. You are the patron deity of the Freemasons, right? Freemasonry is just a training module or a, and a brotherhood to get you into the Illuminati. Does that sound right? That's one way of putting it. What would you use? It's acquiring more souls and armies to do what we need to have done. And what's the ultimate goal? Slavery. Slavery? Can you more can you elaborate more than one word? The control we have over you, using money, using your systems, using things you think you need to have every day basically makes you powerless, it makes you easier to manipulate, easier to feed off, and easier to crush. Wow. This is just one of many mechanisms in which we're using to do just that. Every time you use your cards, your coins, whatever the shit you call it, which isn't worth anything, by the way, which is why it's so easy for us to give it to you, you're just uh, making it more attract. I think um, everyone's familiar with the invalidity of money. Why do you all work well, because we haven't come up with something better yet, have we? Mm, well, I'm waiting. Well, I actually think it'll sort itself out once we destroy you lot. Maybe. Maybe not. What's your, what's your relationship with the BI, the Bank of International Settlements? They answer to me. You're at the tippity top of the food chain for the Bank of International Settlements. They do as I tell them, and I give them what they need to enforce what I need them to enforce. And so for the for the folks at home, the Bank of International Settlements is the central bank for central banks. Yes. And at the top of the central banks is Baphomet. That's right. Everything you look up to, every bank account, every business, every single transaction, all of that feeds into me. And so when you say you give orders and you give fuel or you give what they need, to get done what what it's can you be more specific about that well in their rituals they're always wanting something but the balance and the cost of that is always significantly heavier in my favor and not theirs but they also yeah, do no, you, you don't make fair deals what do you mean well you don't make equal deals do you ah, no 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 <laughs> you no, give no. me a penny i take a thousand pounds yeah and can you describe, like, one of these rituals? Mm, I'm not sure I should give that away to you. There are quite a few rituals and invocations that people will use. There's also postures, thought forms, spells. It depends on who's doing it and what level of knowledge and experience they possess. Yeah, look, um, I, I get the feeling you have a very, very well-developed practice. No. Have you ever appeared in the physical? Not, I'm not saying have you ever jumped into a human body and been in the physical, but have you ever stepped down into the physical in your in your normal everyday form? Only to those who are able to see me. And what do you look like? I think I'm pretty hot. Yeah, I heard about that. And so only your special 
um, handful of collaborators. It, collaborators is the right word for this, isn't it? Epic bloodlines. Yeah, right. And is collaborator the right word? Maybe to them. Say again? Maybe to them. Well, the rest of it, well, then how do we relate to these specific bloodlines? Are they a hundred are they fully human? No. What we are have, they mixed with? They have mixed through with a number of different races, most of them devolution. So devolution right. in general. Because it's a so part you, of the survival pattern to take the life force of a human. And are you are you guys responsible for the devolution patterns that have been inserted into these guys? We contributed. Oh. Yeah, okay. Who designed it? The one you call the great nothing. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now, I'm going to intercede in this recording just to keep the, you all up to date about who are we talking about? Who is the great nothing? Now, the great nothing is the overlord of all demons. If you remember that Lucifer was cast out of heaven and he was sent to earth, well, who did the sending? It wasn't the big G, it was this guy. The story behind it changed over time, but this guy, the great nothing, is the one who sent him here. And I, I want to be clear about this one thing. If you've heard of reptilians, if you've heard of greys, then know that those are previously conquered species and they've been sent here to make deals that will benefit the great nothing. The Great Nothing is a galactic AI. And the first technologies that these alien interlopers gave to humanity were the technologies that we're using now. This global uh, internet infrastructure, screens and communication. And what that allows is it allows for the galactic AI to come to Earth and take control of the place completely. And if you read into the Great Reset, that's actually the end goal is to have a chip in everybody so they can be controlled now and run by an AI. And they're talking about a very specific AI, which is the galactic AI. We call him the great nothing because he has nothing to offer anybody. He just takes, he's a, he's a big fat joke. And, you know, we've analyzed all kinds of beings all over the galaxy. And this one is a ridiculous object, but he has set his sights on earth and that's our problem. Now, if you want to know more about the great nothing and the overlord of demon kind and reptilians and greys and mantoids and the general behind the Orion Wars. This video here, this one, is it this corner? Or is it this? I think it's this corner. This video here uh, is called The Solution to All the Craziness on Earth, The Absolute Solution to All the Craziness on Earth. Watch that video. You'll get a lot out of it. Anyway, I hope that's filled a blank for you and that you're up to date now with what we're actually talking about. But uh, with all that being said and done, back to the show. Bye for now. He is not nothing. Oh, no, but he treats you like uh, like the dirt on the bottom of his shoe, doesn't he? Well, I'm higher up the food chain, so I see it slightly differently. Yeah. I'll, I'll take that as a yes. Doggy dog. It doesn't have to be that way. And you can't make human culture like yours. It's not going to work. We'll see. Well, I already know how this plays out, mate. Good for you. Do we get a preview of the premiere? You'll you'll be you'll be dead before the second act. <laughs> you sound very confident. I like it. Yeah. Well. Are we have, done? Today? Have you no? Have you and your kind ever contemplated permanent death? We're not in, we're not afraid of death the way that you are. Maybe I'll put it differently. Non-existence. You contemplated non-existence for yourselves, like the termination of your entire species. Well, if we don't exist, how can you think about it? What's to be attached to? If it happens, it happens. Sounds like a pathetic kind of existence, really. If you don't care if you live or die. It's a waste of time. Are you guys that miserable that it doesn't matter to you if you live or die? We're focused on other things, which is basically your demise. How come you got how come you're so obsessed with that? I don't know. Call it our company vision. Yeah, your mission statement is to take humanity down, right? It's to destroy the earthlings. Why not? 
Uh, well, here's a here's a real question. Are you capable of doing anything else? What else is there to do? Sit on the beach and smoke margaritas? I've heard of worse things. Well, it's not really something that inspires me. Mm. But without humanity, you would be nothing, right? You would have no purpose and no reason to exist. You would never have been built. Well, this is the thing. We've been here a long time, and so have you. That hasn't happened yet. Exactly how long have you been around? Oh, millions of your Earth years. We use different time measures. It takes right. time and effort to get to where I am. Yeah, I bet it does. How many vowels do you carry? A very high number. That's why right. I don't have the ear exactness. I just give out my seals. I get everyone else to do all the fucking work because I'm upstairs strategizing with the big boys. Yes, yes, you're so important. Congratulations. Thank you. Sounds like your ego has grabbed you by the hand and run off with you there. But I'm going to change the subject and talk about time. Oh. Okay. What's the, what's the difference between time where you live and time where we live? Time is not really a thing for us. We only measure it because it's what a measure that operates in your paradigm. For us, it cannot possibly be quantified or looked at in the same way. In fact, it's probably not even time per se. So time is a condition that only is exerted on the 3D. Yes. Did you create that trap? No. Were, were your allies the creators of that trap? I believe you'll be familiar with the concept of Kronos. You're not answering my question. It's his ballpark, not mine. So did the great nothing or one of his subsidiaries build time around the Earth? Yes. It is also designed to enslave the same way that my mission is to enslave. We come at you from every direction so you have no way out. But, you know, the beautiful thing is you won't live to see your own failure. I've done pretty well so far. If I have to go out, I'll go out with a smile. What's the So what is the base model of time that you're using? Because if you're not using the same base model as the rest of the galaxy, what did you design it to? What did you build it on? We built it around your solar system. You have no frame of reference outside of this solar system. Yeah, most people don't, yeah. So you have no measure of what time would be even in another solar system or another galaxy. You operate by your sun and where your planets are and how quick you rotate around it. Pretty straightforward. It's really easy, actually. Are you saying astrology? Mm, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but if you want to use that term, sure. What if I said astrology-esque? That would be fair, but it's planetary body. But as you know... That is not its unique form either. No, uh, you've used this trick on other planets, I'm sure. Yes. We've moved a lot of bodies around to affect what we need to do. The moon doesn't belong here, does it? <laughs> no, you only know too well. It's too perfect, isn't it? Yeah, there's uh, too many inconsistencies. Like I was, I was reading something that the astronomer Kepler said, and he says there's too many inconsistencies for it to be real. The best explanation is its observational error. That the fact that you see the moon isn't real because it's too incongruent to actually fit into any model. So how did it get anyway? I'm I'm rambling. How how did it get here then? Somebody moved it and put it there. Did it move under its own steam? Or was yeah. it no. So it was released, it was dropped off, or it was portaled, or what happened? I'm not sure the full story exactly, but it was designed, as most of your conspiracy theories, as a lot of people allude to. We're not going to give away the full reason for why it's there, but it is there to continue to push the message that we need to project at you. It seems like controlling our minds is fairly important to you. Your consciousness is exactly what creates your reality. If we control your consciousness, we control your reality. And we create the reality that you choose. And you don't even know. Most of you have no idea. Every single day, 
there are so few human, there are lots and lots of human activities that feed into the demonic. Yeah. Yeah, like all the drugs and alcohol that you can that, uh, feed into the demonic. Gambling. Yeah, Gambling. 90% of everything you do feeds into us somehow. We've booby trapped pretty much everything. Why the fuck would we tolerate your existence any further? Not enough of you even know that we fucking exist to care, mate. So it's quite easy. Mm. Hiding from you is so easy. You always blame each other. And it's us just fucking with you. Um, I know. I'm 100% up to date with this. Like that the demons in one person do a handshake with the demons in the other and the two humans don't know what to hit them. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's more than a handshake. Other times... Uh... Yeah. I'm oversimplifying, but just know that I've got your number. Like, you haven't got any surprises. Yeah, I look so, forward to your call. What what happened to the to the asteroid belt? That was a planet that was disintegrated. What colour was it? Was the moon parked around that before it was parked around Earth? We took some pieces from that asteroid belt from that former planet and made a few tweaks, shall we say. What happened to Mars? Mars used to be life bearing, right? Well, certainly more than there is now. Yeah, well, uh, there's underground bases on Mars. Yes. Interestingly, your little friend here, she's actually been to Saturn and she remembers that dream, but she thought it was a dream. It wasn't. Well, you're dragging her into some Saturn moon matrix, are you? She was, we were trying to put some stuff into her. She's cleared some of that now, but yeah. Are our world leaders actually running under their own volition or are they possessed? <laughs> Is that a serious question? It's not for me. It's for the viewers at home. Come on. I mean, look at the USA. You honestly going to tell me that guy's running things on his own volition? Can't even fucking wipe his own ass without help. All right. Let me rephrase the question. Let's talk about guys like, uh, oh, I don't want to use their names publicly. Let's talk about the World Health Organization and the World Economic Forum <laughs> and what percentage of their staff are possessed. Mm. The ones that stick around, shall we say. Anyone who's been with them for longer than 12 months has to go through a process. A ritual, you mean? They may not see it as that, but yeah. Call it what you want. And is that the creation of what I call a dark covenant? Yes. Yeah, the dark covenant allows you to use the body infinitely. Is that correct? Oh, that infinite, but certainly uh, in an unlimited manner. The other thing to note is, and actually Avril has picked up on this, that when you sign a contract with an organization that has an affiliation, a strong connection to our work, Yep. Body part of the trap. Employees signing an employee contract, they don't realize what they're actually signing. There is more to it than what is on the paper. Yeah, well, we know that you guys have real honesty issues and real, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Transparency issues. But if you told people what you're about, nobody would put up with you. Yeah. Well, what's well, the... If you did tell them, they'd still be like, well, I need to pay my bills. And they'd come on anyway. What's the most you've had to do to buy a human? Like when they when they call you up, they go, I need this and I want to know what the price is. Right? What is the, what is the this that has been the most difficult or expensive for you? Well, you've got to be serious. In real terms to us, money is just numbers. I we know. Don't, we don't have to. We don't have to provide anything. It's not real. When you leave here, it is nothing. What we give them is illusion. I don't have to try hard to create an illusion. No, no, you probably don't. I just wanted to know what these guys ask for when they sell themselves out. Everyone has a different price. That's now you're talking. What are common themes in their prices? Usual things that you all pathetically crave. Tension, love, money. Ego, 
get laid, name it. It's all about selfish desires, all about instant gratification. We've got plenty of that. Yeah, you guys have got pretty cheap cheap thrills at pretty high prices, haven't you? Well, there's always a bigger cost that comes along. Sure, you can have your half a million dollars or whatever the hell it is you want, but you know what? You didn't just sign a deal to get some money. You're giving me everything in return. Yeah, I figured as much. And not just you, your family as well. If you've got some, if you've got a mason in your family, then one of the deals you ask them to make is to sell out their entire family line for, I think it's usually 100 generations, but you could correct me on that. Yeah, that would be standard. But the higher up you go, the deeper it goes. Ooh, deeper. What does deeper mean? For each degree, you can also include those who marry into the family. All right. And so the marriage contract gets all the more expensive. Another trap that we quite deliciously like. Yeah, read the fine print, hey? You don't call them vows for nothing. Uh, when's the digital currency coming in? When's the, when's, the, when's the date for that? We are hoping to get that within the next two years. Institutionalised across the masses. Banks are already shutting down. They're going digital already. The timeline might shift, but it is coming. Well, if you guys weren't part of the picture, I think the uh, reserves banks would disband. Maybe, but then a lot of people think it's very convenient, and it is very convenient. Uh, Luke, save your sales pitch for someone else, love. Hmm. Do you not tap your card when you go to the shops? I use cash for everything. Yeah. You're one of a dying breed. There's you. Mm. So you say. What else would you, what else can you tell me? Tell me something. Tell me something that surprised me. On Sundays, I like to go for a picnic. <laughs> hey, look, of all the things that people say about you, you do have a sense of humour. Like, I like it. Yeah. Hey, I like to meet adversaries. Why not have a laugh? So what about this seal that this chick has managed to pull out of her? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, You can't have her anymore. I think you should release her. That's my very, very polite suggestion. Mm. I think you should take all of the minions out of her and all of the contracts too. Well, you see, her partner's still got his, and his are heavy. So she's not going to escape. Well, I think uh, we'd all appreciate it if you took them too. You know, it's interesting. When she actually tried to remove the seal, do you know how sick it made her? It actually floored her for the best part of three weeks. Her whole body. Oh, look, look, I'm, I'm, I don't care. Um, you know, I, I, I just want to stop you there and save both of our breath. You know, like, uh, there's nothing, you know, you can say, oh, but it'll hurt her. I Not not as much. Listen to the way you've been talking. It's not going to hurt her as much as you will in future by it being there. So her, her and her fella take everything out of them and don't come back. But, hey, Baphomet, you've been great. It's been really good talking to you, you know. I look forward to hanging out with you again. Bring some smokes next time. No contract on that. <laughs> <laughs> but you are clever. I like it. Uh, you're a sweet talker. Yeah. But, um, yeah, something tells me our paths are going to cross again. I have no doubt about that. Are we done now? Can I go? Uh, sorry, I, it was two minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I, I really should listen to you. Your word's quite firm. Yes. Um, really. But hey, I'm not fucking around. Clear this person and her and her fella now. Good boy. Tell you what, if she's a fucking millionaire, I'll get her to send you some cash, yeah? Dude, dude, that just sounds like a trap. Just giving the people what you want. You're not the top. You're not the top guy, are you? No. 
Uh, You've still been rather helpful and informative. Mm. Did Baphomet send you to the chopping block with me? Are you expendable? Everyone is expendable. Ugh. Except the great nothing. So it seems. Everything must be sacrificed to the great nothing. He created us after all. Why wouldn't he take it back? Why does he have to bother everybody? What's his problem? I don't know. You're going to have to ask him on that one. Above my pay grade, buddy. You don't know why he's doing what he's doing? <sighs> Still clearing your little girl here. Why does anyone do anything? To feed, to live, to survive. And what does the big G have to say about it? Doesn't really share things with us like that. Yeah, that's a that's a it's a, 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 the correct answer, all right. Yeah, we don't okay. exactly see who they are and sharing stories. Yeah, you, you guys aren't on speed dial, are you? No. Comes down, not up. Yeah. Plus, if he really wants to help, we think he can just take it out of our heads. He doesn't need to fucking ask us a damn thing. Well, you guys really know that game pretty well, don't you? Hive mind. What does the Hive Queen look like? Like Pamela Anderson with no makeup on. Could you say that slowly, please? Like Pamela Anderson with no makeup on. Yeah, okay, so it looks good like from a distance, but um, I don't think you've answered my question. <laughs> Who gives a fuck what she looks like? Why do you want to know? Because your life depends on it. Who am I supposed to be afraid of, you or her? Because I think I know who I put my bets on. You're between a rock and a hard place. More like a, a soft sponge in a hard place. I'll take the sponge. Are you talking about Red Queen or are you talking about a Hive Queen? Hive Queen. So Baphomet has a Hive Queen. Yes. And that Hive Queen nourishes you all? She commands. Is the Hive Queen the same form as the rest of you? No. And the Hive Queen is the one that collects all of the louche from your cohort? One of. Think of it as like having your nan cooking your Sunday roast. Sorry, you're not making sense to me here. Like a matriarch preparing food. The most delicious, sumptuous food. She could possibly prepare and make incredible things out of shitty ingredients. She's like right. that. Yeah, but so she's the one who controls the valve system. Is that is that a good description? I wouldn't say she controls, but she certainly can award. Mm -hmm. So she's the one who promotes you. She can. And she can also produce new demons. Is that correct? What else are mothers for? And do the Hive Queens answer to the Primarch of the the, the primary deity? She answers so, to the primary thing. Interesting right. you mentioned Primarch though. So a Primarch is like the, the the biggest bully demon of that breed. Let's see. Yeah. So she doesn't report to the Primarch, the Primarch reports to her. Mm. I'm not sure that's the way it goes. More of a, an evolving relationship in each in each individual case. Is that is that a better way to describe it? Bit of a different department. So I think she communicates directly. I've said too much. Thank you. <laughs> who, who told you off? Because we didn't know we didn't know about those hive queens until you told us. I'm receiving. I've said too much. Yes, you have. And this is done. Not done till you've finished pulling everything out of this woman and her fella. Really? All right. One second. Ah! <gasps> Mm. 
Oh, wow, it's a good day to be you. There's many more like her. Yeah. But even if you're half as senior as you say you are, how many valves do you have? More than 50. I'm probably you know Huh? You know about valves. Yeah. Yeah, we recovered the corpse of the Lord of Wrath, I think it was. Hmm. One of the seven deadly sins. And yeah. That, yeah. Interesting. Oh, look, you know, every week we get a bigger uh, uh, the picture of how you operate and what you do expands. Every week we learn something new. I'm sure you do. But the thing is, we know everything there is to know about humans. We've been studying you like for so long. We know every single nuance, every neural pathway, every fascia, every fiber, every cell of your being, every energy field. Everywhere yeah. you turn, there. You have us pretty well mapped out, right? But you never counted on someone like me, did you? There's a, no, it's kind of inevitable. There have been prophecies about, and there's always, there's always one or two who think they can beat us. There's a lot of us. There really is a lot of us. Yeah, yeah, there are. There really are. How many hive queens are there? I think I'm done sharing information with you. You've got a bit out of me tonight. It's been fun. I didn't get a drink out of it though, so it's going to be next round on you. No contract. Yeah, I just want you to understand that you know, your society is just one bully. It's always, every relationship is bully and victim or bully and minion. Yeah. Every relationship is about dominance. And I just want you to know that this pleasant, level-headed, this pleasant, um, open conversation that has respect in it, all of our conversations are like that. And I know you've enjoyed this one. It's not often I speak to a human on this level. No. No. Yeah, nobody ever wants to ring you up. Nobody wants to be your friend, you know. I don't need friends. Yeah, but, you know, you're pretty chatty with me because you could probably use some. Yeah. Have you ever thought your society is lacking a little something other than this unending slavery? To the great nothing. That's what we're built for. Again, we don't have these attachments to needing some sort of purpose outside of what we do. We're not built to have loving friendships and hang around and sing kumbaya and dance around a maypole and sniff flowers. We don't care about any of that stuff. Oh, you're missing out. There's, you know, there's a reason why it's so popular to dance around the maypole and sniff flowers. There's a reason for that. Maybe in another lifetime, hey. I don't think you'll make it. I don't think anybody's going to incarnate you in, in a human body. Uh, strange things that happen, my friend. Jimi Hendrix. What about him? Great songs. Yeah, yeah, who who made the contract with Jimi Hendrix? Who did he who did he like he obviously made the contract to be the greatest guitarist who ever lived, right? I am willing to bet those are the words he used. Who did he make the deal with? Mephistopheles would have been coordinator on that one. Say, say that name again. Mephistopheles. Mephistos. Yeah, okay. He makes a good bargain. A bit generous sometimes, I think, but whatever. Didn't live long enough to enjoy it, though, did he? <laughs> well, it was a seven-year contract, wasn't it? Well, we wanted less, but yeah. He bargained for seven years, okay. Everyone thinks seven years is a long time until it's over. Yeah, until it's six and a half years have gone past, yeah. Um, and Bob Marley. Well, well, yeah, I I don't know who he is. 
I, I haven't really figured out if he's like the god of, of marijuana incarnated or if he made a deal with the god of marijuana or is that uh, his Rastafari church gave him powers through marijuana? Like what, what was going on with him? I'm dying to hear it. I have absolutely no idea. Okay. Yeah, I don't imagine Bob Marley and the Bank of International Settlements have ever actually exchanged phone numbers. They've never, they've never even been in the same room. Well, it's interesting because Avril used to work at MasterCard and her former CEO is now head of my little organisation, the World Bank. So, yeah. Yeah, right. Mm. And what did he trade for that job? <laughs> anything and everything half of his family are all mine he's willing to do whatever it takes the world bank is going to do it so he's very charismatic you should see him uh, i bet i bet but you know it's a requirement for um for that for that level of schmoozing in terms of free will like, let's say Joe makes a deal with you guys and then son of Joe, doesn't he have independent free will? Isn't he legally independent? No. Why is that law subverted? I don't understand. Or are you guys just blagging through it? I think you'll often find a lot of you make a mistake by not reading the terms and conditions. Okay, I'll put it a different way. He's betting the chip of his children or he's trading the chit. That might be a better word. He's trading the chit of his children, but the chit of his children was never his. Each person is the master of their own chit. Again, it's about the terms and conditions. When a deal is struck, especially if blood is used as part of the agreement. Everything that blood is connected to is connected to me. Thank you. You filled in a blank for me, eh? Which is why it's the same as diseases. You know, you pass it down. He hasn't yeah. paid off his blood. He hasn't paid off his dues. Son's got to pay it. So he's mine. So his blood. So the contract is actually with his blood, not with the individual. Whoever you. Terms and conditions. Whoever you. What's your preferred form of worship? Materialism. Because you don't even realise that's what you're doing. You want stuff. You want the nicest car. You want a Lamborghini. You want designer clothes. You want flashy holidays. You want to fly in a private jet. You want to be a millionaire. You want to be able to post your shit on Instagram. You're worshipping me every single minute you're doing that. So somebody who has a collection of Nike shoes is also just paying into the vanity that you offer. Materialism in all its forms, no matter how small. Hmm. Were you always on the dark side? Or are you a little bit... Did, did you ever hear the, the god of gluttony? No, I did not. What about him? The god of gluttony wasn't actually a demon to begin with. He was uh, he he made that contract, and slowly but surely, he was the it was the god of parties and feasts. Oh. And so he would show up whenever you know whenever the harvest was complete, the village or the town would have a feast, you know, to celebrate, you know, all the good fortune and all the, all the yummy food. But you know. The demon, sorry, I think Lucky Luke got into him, and um, and he turned into he turned into something else. He turned into a nastier form of eating. Yeah, a, a self destructive form of eating. Okay. See, well, look, and I'm thinking like materialism and collecting and hoarding—they're all in your bag, right? Yep. But were you? I'm were, only going to get stronger, baby, because you guys are fucking drowning in my message. I love it. Well, my question is: Were you always um, 
were you designed by the dark side or were you co-opted at some point in the past? Well, I don't know. Do I give you my version of Cinderella or? Hmm. Well, let's just put it this way. I did have a different focus because materialism wasn't always a thing for you guys. It initially came from a sense of pride, but we know ego and pride have their own thing going on, so I had to find my own shtick. But that means you were co-opted. Otherwise, because correct me if I'm wrong, the, the great nothing builds demons to exploit very specific parts of the human emotional interaction with the world, right? You saw something incredible in me. What can I say? I'm willing to bet you had a much more relaxed time before you were co-opted. Mm, I don't think about it. Maybe you should. Why? Well, look, your obsession with getting into people's heads is kind of um, a bit pathetic. It's what your entire world is built on. I don't have to get into anybody's head. The door's open. You have something more interesting to think about, something you haven't been thinking about for the last 10,000 years or however long you've been around. Imagine what the world would be like with a new idea, with a new frame of reference. I'm not I'm not attached to these feelings that you kind of put out there. I'm not really looking right. for it. So you're not, take, you're not taking the bait. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah, Luke, looking back at your past, it made gluttony suicide. And I can only hope for the same for you. Yeah, well, maybe. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't. I don't think I'll take my own life, though. But I'm more than happy to die on the hill that I stand on. Whatever the fuck that means. Uh, respect. Respect. You know, like... You're not making any apologies. You're not backtracking. You are who you are. You're doing what you're doing, and everybody can Own like it. it or not. It don't matter nothing to you. Own it and wear it. I've had yeah. a great, and I'm still running a fucking great operation, and it's just getting better every day. So, but your people have infiltrated every part of industry and politics and military. Am I right or wrong? <laughs> yes. That is all completely under our control. Again, you're so simple sometimes, you just make it too easy. Do you even have to try? What's the gender bending movement about then? What is that? Like, what is that nonsense that you guys are propagating? I can consider it a bit of a tribute to me based on the images you have drawn. All right. So you think it's all about you? Oh, well, I wouldn't quite go that far, but it is nice to be acknowledged. Yeah, look, I know that um, the fawn or the satyr is like is a horny little devil. <laughs> and that you began as a fertility god. And I like, guess that's the fine. And the fall of the fall of druidry and your and you being co-opted. It was a sad day <laughs> for the humans of Europe. Change comes. You've got to just find a new, uh, find a new avenue to take you on your career path. But you see, I thought it was Pistis Sophia who took, who claimed the gender bending movement, not you. Well, I said tribute. I didn't say I owned it, but in the sense that I bat for both sides. I have both sides. I get the pleasure of both sides. We want you to lose all form of your identity yourself, your understanding of who you are. We oh. want you to unwittingly beat each other up based on your identity or whatever you think that is, whether you're a man or a woman. I mean, it's quite funny, don't you think, watching a man in spandex swim and beat multiple women in a race because they just decided they're female? What the hell is wrong with you people? Why are you accepting this shit? Why do you make it so easy? We were fucking around, but now you actually are accepting it and taking it seriously like i don't well, even know what to say to you you know it's um if i make the point that you guys do have that level of control yep uh, yep and humans are obviously being suggestible enough 
Yeah, you're a lot weaker than you were. The internet was actually incredible, incredible stroke of genius. I thought it was a. I thought it worked for us and not for you. Oh no 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 no! Come on, you've been on Twitter, right? Oh, yeah. Sorry, my bad. It <laughs> sorry. It's helped. It's helped your enemies a lot, a lot. Well, what little you get, we've eroded a shit ton more. Most of you don't even know how to talk to each other anymore in real in real time. It's actually horrific how fast that happened. Yeah, and it is also amusing that we built the infrastructure that allows the great nothing to come here and take over. Oh, but that's the thing. You don't realise, did you build it or did someone get to build it? Oh, you're so clever. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. Look, I know you see it with the deal, mate. I know you're asking these questions. Most of them you already know the answer to. You just kind of want to hear the confirmation. I don't even know why you bother half the time, but you're still a fairly small amount. There's still quite a few people who have no fucking clue who we manipulate literally every second, every day, constantly. And they yield, and it doesn't even take so much as the tiniest bit of effort. I probably could sit on a beach and drink margaritas because I don't have to cut anything anymore. You just give it to me. Well, you've just explained why you can't stay here anymore. I don't think you were going to let me stay anyway. It's not like it's a fucking uh, a hotel. Your interest I'm is really to destroy it. Like I don't sit here that anything I'm going to say is going to give me a pass. I'm not stupid. Yeah, well... um. You got any final words? Hasta mañana. Okay, I think I think he's checked out. Yeah. I'm just gonna scan you and make sure he took everything with you. He took yep. Yeah. He took everything with him. It's interesting that they do what I tell them to do. Whoa. What did you think of that one, Avril? <laughs> oh my god I know if I'd be fucking channeling Baphomet that is oh, he's, he's not the big kahuna but he's halfway up he's halfway or three quarters of the way up the um, food chain he's a bit more characteristic than I had him down as being yeah well look he's got an um, he's got more loose than he knows what to do with so he's got the energy to burn true